Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And today I'm going to be showing you how I can measure high voltage waveforms on my oscilloscope using a big coil like this. But first of all, I want to show you something else cool that just happened. So a while ago, I made a video about how to make this robotic rolling backpack that you could drive around with a phone, and I said that I'd eventually make it so it could follow the person by itself. Well, this project actually got featured in the Make Magazine, which I thought was really cool. The Make Magazine is a magazine that demonstrates projects that people build by themselves. And as you can see right here on this page, it shows my project. Uh, Tanner Packham and his rolling bag motorized upgrade. So that's pretty cool because I am in the Make Magazine. Well, now let's get to the topic that I was originally going to make this video on. That's measuring the frequency of different high voltage sources with my oscilloscope. So normally, if you want to measure a different waveform on your oscilloscope, then you basically connect whatever thing you're trying to measure to the probe and ground of your scope, and you can see the waveform displayed on the screen. But this doesn't always work, because the maximum voltage input of this oscilloscope is approximately 400 volts, as stated right here next to the probe entry. Now, if you're trying to measure the frequency or waveform of a circuit such as this cold cathode uh, fluorescent tube, then it may not work so well because the output of this is well over 400 volts. And this capacitor right here even states that it is 3000 volts and that is way over the threshold. Now you could always try and measure the voltage on the input oscillator circuit, but due to some inductive voltage spikes from this transformer, that voltage could still exceed 400 volts, making it unsafe to read on your oscilloscope. But luckily you can read high voltage waveforms using a coil. So this coil is actually a coil that I got from an old rotary telephone. This was the coil that rung the little bell whenever the phone rang. So I thought that's pretty cool. It's a little piece of vintage tech. Now all you have to do is connect this to your oscilloscope just across the coil. And this will let you um, electromagnetically couple your oscilloscope to any project so that way you can view the waveform on the screen without having any physical contact with the actual project. Now, as you can see, I have my oscilloscope and it's hooked up to this coil. I have my cold cathode fluorescent tube right here and the driver circuit. So if I connect this to power, whoa. So as you can see, we have a waveform that is being inputted on the coil. And if we adjust the time base, we can see that we've got a relatively good sine wave right here. You can measure this frequency by pressing store and moving the cursors around so that way the cursors are on the peak of each sine wave. And this will allow us to calculate the frequency of approximately 41.23 kilohertz. Now I've used this coil many a times when I'm testing my ZVS driver circuits because this coil can measure the electromagnetic waves coming out of that ZVS driver and I can see exactly what's happening inside the circuit and see what waveform it's creating uh, in the transformer. And I think that's pretty cool. Now one con about this is how the wave can change based on external factors such as distance from coil to um, circuit or whatever and also the things in between. So if I move my hand so there's no hand in between the coil and the circuit, you can see that the waveform is relatively big and if I put my hand in between, my hand absorbs some of the magnetic field and it decreases the amplitude. Now also the distance away also makes a large difference. Now if I move this fluorescent tube farther away, the amplitude gets smaller. If I move it closer, the amplitude gets larger. Now the principle on which this works is similar to the principle on which I made this uh, electronic interference scanner with Keystone Science. The same principle that a transformer works on. So inside a transformer there is a magnetic core and there are two separate coils on each side. And one coil is the primary coil and there is an alternating current being fed into this coil and it creates an alternating magnetic field around that core and that induces a voltage into the secondary coil uh, depending on the ratio of turns from this coil to this coil. Now in our little example, our primary coil is something somewhere in the room or some kind of circuit with a transformer inside it that is generating a magnetic field. 
So let's say we've got this coil and that is generating this giant magnetic field. Now this magnetic field is going everywhere and it gets exponentially weaker as it gets farther away from the transmitting circuit. And then we've got this very large wound coil right here and this is the secondary coil and it is connected to the oscilloscope. Now this coil probably has over a thousand turns inside it and that induces a relatively large voltage into the secondary coil even if this coil is far away from the primary coil. Now this setup doesn't always need to be used to measure high voltage circuits. It can be used to measure any circuit that you want to have complete isolation for with your oscilloscope. Like let's say you don't want to have your oscilloscope interfering inside a circuit or you don't want a ground in your oscilloscope to be connected to the ground of your circuit. You can connect it to one of these coils and and you can use almost any coil. You can use a coil from a solenoid. I personally like this coil from a rotary telephone. It works really good and it's served me for a long time. This will work on any circuit that creates some kind of magnetic field around it. And you can measure the magnetic field and that kind of measures the oscillations in inside the circuit. So that is my quick little video that explains how I measure different uh, circuits that are high voltage using my oscilloscope so I can see the waveform and measure the frequency those circuits are producing without any fear of damage or harm to my oscilloscope. I've also used this to measure my ZVS driver and Slayer Exciter up here. As always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time.